So I got that Ethernet driver running on the uh, MediaTek MT7688 and also patched in that old um, floating point emulator I found so that I could actually uh, log in or something in the TLS using uh, floats. So had to do that too, but it runs all right now. So far I've managed to get three days of uptime out of it before it falls over for some reason, but there's definitely a lot of stuff that still needs to be cleaned up. Um, let's go. So yep, yeah, here's all the little boot stuff that comes up. And it has a Ether Zero device. Oops. So the stats file is uh, something that comes with um, nine front and plan nine. It's uh, part of the portable um, Ethernet driver stuff. And then there's another one that I added from mine. So this is all generated by a little function I wrote. Um, needed some of these little things when I was do debugging stuff. Um, if I didn't get the uh, the ring buffer set up right, it would trip over and throw this. Uh, um, it actually threw an interrupt for some sort of DMA coherency error so I could pick that up and a few other things and make sure that um, you know I had the stuff in the right memory locations and all that. Here's the actual internet status and what my current mask is and what my global configuration file is set to. And so a lot of these um, common devices um, we'll have in the portable directory a dev file. So like you find your mouse and you find Ethernet. And this is the thing that actually generates um, the instructions to make um, the actual file system, the files, what happens when you write those files or read those files. Um, and so you got some basic stuff. You don't have to sort of reinvent the wheel every time. But you do have to make your um, driver work with it. So like this, you know, add Ethernet cards part of that portable code. Um, you know, it comes with its own little Ether data structure to hold all these sort of common stats that the system needs to know um, about your network interface. Um, there's some things you have to add yourself, like, you know, you have to make your own shutdown command specific to your thing, your own attach command. Here's where I put that uh, if stat, which is just right here. So I can change that to whatever I want. Um, and that's really handy and all. Um, unfortunately, um, this device is a little odd compared to a lot of other things. It is a, has a switch wired right into it. So there's the ports that you see on the outside. This thing, you know, is the board to like a standard sort of Wi-Fi router. Um, so this would like typically be your um, WAN port here. Uh, zero and then there's one two three and four uh, this thing seems to have a port five that isn't actually hooked to anything and then port six is what the CPU is hooked to like the the built-in networking on it um, so you can't you know plug a piece of you know cat five or six right into it you have to go through the switch um, so that means that I had to oh, make there it is a thing to run right off the bat to just sort of blast um, stuff into the registers of um, you know, the switch controller to get it set up and and running. 
um, which works, but isn't ideal. Um, especially because I'd like this thing to actually behave as a router one day. Um, I do have one of those little Onion Omegas, which only has, um, like by default, the, the basic packaging. It doesn't even come with an Ethernet port. You can buy an adapter for one. And from what I've seen, it seems like all they do is tell the built-in network to only open like port zero and just disable everything else. And it just talks, you know, from port six out to port zero and that's all those. So what I need is a driver for the switch, but there isn't um, something in the portable code to do that. Uh, there was years ago a uh, there was a company made like a Plan 9 based router um, that Cisco ended up buying them I think it was um, so that code never came out um, but there was also another company if I remember right it's actually the same owner or the same guy involved uh, named CoRaid that sold uh, sort of storage appliances uh, that ran on Plan 9 and they did release their code so there's uh, if you want to do ATA over Ethernet, um, there's already a file system available for that. But I'm going to have to write my own uh, switch driver. So that's going to be interesting. Um, what I'm thinking so far is, um, you know, I'll have a top directory for the switch. Uh, in there I'll have a control file. So I can write stuff into the control file to change some global sort of settings of the switch, um, a stats file. And uh, looking around at what I can find about this thing, there is um, several registers that are dedicated to just storing um, good and bad packets going out. So that's um, actually something that can be fetched. Um, this thing also has, um, can do interrupts. So there's like a, um, some interrupt stats that you can pull out of it too. Um, so far all I've really dug out that seemed kind of useful was that uh, it'll throw an interrupt if, uh, if you plug in or unplug anything from a port. So it'll let you know if that's happened. And um, it seems also be able to say that it can detect broadcast storms. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. I uh, haven't played with it yet though. But anyway, so in there I'll also thinking of having like uh, directories for each port. So we have port zero and one and so on. And um, this thing can handle VLANs. Um, it seems like it'll both uh, do like untagging at the ports. You could put multiple VLANs per port to do trunking. You can set your, you know, VLAN values, which can be like all the way up to 4,096. It uh, looks like it'll hold like a 12-bit um, integer in there. So I'll also need um, directories for, you know, any sort of, you know, VLANs I have in there. And then just to make it more interesting, I was thinking under the uh, port directories, you know, there'll have to be a control so you could specify specific parameters for that port, um, like a stats file. Oops. Um, so you can get stats just on that port. And then in here too, um, any sort of uh, you know, any sort of VLAN that might be associated with that port. And then sort of the reverse in the uh, the VLAN directories. So you can have a, you know, VLAN 21, and it'll also have a control, so you can set whatever um, controls it has. You know, stats, um, although I'm not really sure what kind of stats you could pull up on it. Um, and then, um, you know, port directories for any ports, you know, associated with that VLAN. So 
So to do that, I've had to uh, start cobbling together my own dev dot switch here. Uh, mostly just uh, borrowing code right now from uh, dev ether and um, bridge because they both deal with ethernet stuff and VLAN stuff. Um, and so there's some stuff in there that is kind of useful for this. Um, well, yeah, so this is all going to be just basic uh, value in front sort of stuff. But that's a work in progress. Um, turns out if you want to just write like one directory into something, that's pretty, pretty easy. But when you start stacking them, um, because what it ends up doing is, uh, let's see here, yeah, there it is, walk. So the, um, you know, everything in plan nine speaks the, you know, 9P, the nine protocol. Um, part of the nine protocol is a uh, walk, which is, you know, what happens when you want to sort of move through um, a directory tree and see what's in it. And so in this case, it specifies that like, you know, if someone does a walk in the switch file system, it will return, you know, this. So it does dev walk. Um, dev walk is part of the um, portable code here. So it's in dev C or dev dot C. Um, one of the things that gets passed is um, like a pointer um, to a function, this swgen, which generates the actual stuff that's going to be shown to be in that directory. So, oops. So dev walk gets called, and one of the things it does, it's kind of an interesting way of doing this, um, it eventually comes down here um, and it goes into this infinite little loop. And it will end up calling, you know, your, um, you know, file system generating function and pass it the current value, you know, the index of the loop. And so back here, this comes in as S. And so for something like um, this GDIR, which is the sort of global directory, this will be what's under switch. Um, it'll come and check for so many elements in my prefab, you know, uh, switch directory stuff. So that'll run through all the files, you know, the control and the stats. Um, and then when it gets above that, I'm going to have it sort of subtract out the value of that, pass it on to another thing, and keep iterating through all the ports it can find. So right now I had to make my own um, sort of data structures for all this. And I'm leaning towards uh, just doing a linked list for the ports and the VLANs. So I'll just iterate through all that um, and have to do all this code to actually send back to the system um, you know, there's going to be a file of a certain name of a certain owner of a certain permission and to write that out. And so that's what's involved in actually making everything uh, look like files. Um, but on the driver end, um, this is all sort of back to uh, bit flipping stuff. So I found some things to set VLANs. Uh, VLAN like member groups, untagging. Um, so I already wrote the little commands here to just read and write to the switch. Um, so that was already part of the Ethernet code. So right now, just going through and figuring out everything I can get the switch to do and just sort of quickly banging out um, little functions to do that. Um, and then eventually sort of probably tie it in, you know, with these actual um, sort of data structures I'm planning out and like, what are they going to hold? Like what sort of things? Um, like there's a, a thing to set like how the LEDs actually blink, like whether they blink on activity or blink on what speed they're hooked to, or there's an actual an option just to have them blink like just blink on and off at a steady pace. 
Um, if you ever worked on like, you know, networking equipment, like in an actual rack or something, um, this comes up if you're like, I don't know where to, what this port number is, you can get somebody to actually, you know, make that port blink so you can find it. Um, yeah, so tons of fun here. But when it's done, between this and the existing um, bridge software, it's already a nine front. This thing um, should um, be a fully functioning router. Um, once I actually get this all set up to do things like turn ports off and on and assign them to specific VLANs um, and all that sort of stuff. And then after that will be Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been up to here. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, lots of weird little options in here. So I can show it on here, like this actually has the ability to sort of uh, pull down, you know, information on the packets going in and out. And uh, there's actually one that's set up. Let's see, here we go. So I can pull in um, um, stats for, um, you know, received good packets, received bad packets, and this can be done per port. <clears throat> so there's a different register for every port that'll hold this. It's like 16, 16 bits of, of good, it's 16 bits for bad. Um, it's like a 16 bit unsigned integer, just increments, I guess. Um, and then for s some reason, probably like this, one, I don't quite get why they did this, but like port six is on its own thing. Like port five isn't, even though it's not hooked to anything. Um, I don't know if there's some sort of option for chips that happen to use port five instead of six. Um, but this one uses six as actually like it comes with, um, you know, both the onion and this router board I have come with a copy of Linux already installed. And if I fire up Linux, it'll say like, um, that it's using port six of the switch. Um, cause it, they have some code, I guess that, uh, outputs some of that information into their proc directory. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so hopefully that'll be fun when I get that done and maybe I'll make some fun little program that makes the lights blink in some cool order or something. Then I can just point a camera at it and do a demo that way. Cause other than that, like, you know, showing that it works would just be, um, you know, sort of like this where it's like, oh, I can, you know, ping Google. So this is actually the little little router board. It can ping. Not terribly exciting, but it does work. Um, and it's actually um, I'm gonna have to go through and do something with the um, the U boot to make it run automatically. I still have to manually go in through the um, the serial port and tell it to you know fetch specific files from the server which is handy for debugging because I'll rename them every time I come up with a new um, a new kernel with some other functionality and tell it to run the new kernel and then um, fetch a plan nine file and run the whole thing. So hopefully to have this done soon, probably be this week, this coming week, if work isn't too busy. Um, but you know, in the meantime, uh, have fun.